Good morning, everyone. Um, we're back for another week. We're going to be looking at fractions this week. And I'm really gutted that we're not doing this face to face because fractions is one of my favorite subjects to teach. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky doing it on the computer like this, but I think I'm confident that we can manage this. You were all amazing at getting on to do the online quiz last week. That's really important because I'm going to use that quiz to see what gaps we've got, what things we need to go over again, and then make new lessons based on that. So it's really important that you're honest on those quizzes. And if you get something wrong, it doesn't matter. It's just a way for me to see what's going on. Because obviously I can't walk around your living rooms like we would do in the classroom. So fractions. We know lots of people get freaked out by fractions. It's not a big deal. You've been doing fractions since you were babies. It's like division. You probably for years, you've been splitting things into groups equally. That's all fractions is. It's that simple. So don't get stressed out. Um, this first lesson is going to be a bit trickier and then we're gonna break it down in the next few lessons. So if today's lesson seems a bit confusing, don't panic on Tuesday and Wednesday's lesson. We're gonna go over some of these things in more detail. Um, you can pause this video as many times as you want, rewind, watch again. So take responsibility for your learning. If something's not making sense, don't just sit there carrying on watching. Rewind, start again. We all know that sometimes we get distracted, we stop concentrating, we're staring out the window and not listening. The beauty of this rather than a classroom is you can rewind me. Okay, we're gonna get started. So, the question here, we've got three friends, three friends and they're sharing apples. Each of them is getting the same amount. That's really important when we're talking about division or fractions. We're talking about equally sharing. So in this case, there are six apples. We've got three friends and six apples. So those six apples are shared. We know shared is another word for divided between three people. And actually the way this fraction then works is very similar to the way the division works. We're just sort of stacking them on top of each other. We've got six things and we're splitting it into three parts. We've got six items and we're splitting those whole things into three parts. Um, and that would mean that each of these three people would get two apples. This is sort of the basics of fractions. If it doesn't make total sense now, don't panic, because by Wednesday, it will make more sense. What if there was only one apple? And perhaps this is the kind of fraction you're feeling a little bit more confident with. We've got one apple, one whole, that we're gonna split equally among three friends. So we're gonna split this one apple into three, three equal parts. Um, I know these don't look equal, but that's the best I can do on this laptop. So this one apple is split into three equal parts and each friend gets one of those three parts. You might remember from um, year three, I think it is, that we call this a unit fraction because there's a one on the top. When there's a one on the top, it's a unit fraction. And it's telling us that the unit of this fraction is one third. And there are three one thirds. That's one third. That's one third. And that's one third. Together, those three thirds make one whole. Um, don't worry too much about that if you can't remember that. It's not the end of the world. Um, what's important is that we realize we're sharing this one apple into, with three people, which means that we're splitting this apple into one third one whole split into three parts and each person gets one of those parts don't be confused here into thinking that one is because we started with one whole that's not the case we started with one whole that we split into three parts because there were three children and that's where our denominator comes remember we've talked about denominators last year denominator deep down so the denominator, it's the deeper sound, begins with D, deep and down. It's below the line. Numerators are above the line. The denominator tells us how many parts the whole is split into. Feels like a lot of information so far, I know. It's really not. 
all we've said is that a fraction has a denominator. That's the number at the bottom. That's the number of parts that the whole is split into. The numerator tells us how many parts we're talking about. If I'm only talking about one part, then we also can call that a unit fraction. You can remember that because when we talk about our place value grid and we have uh, ones or units, tens, hundreds, thousands, unit is the same as one, one. So a unit fraction is where there, the numerator is one. The denominator tells us how many parts the whole is split into. What if there were five apples? What if those three friends are sharing five apples? Pause this video for a moment and think about how you might do deal with that. Brilliant. Hopefully you've had a chance to have a look. Well, there's a couple of ways that we could deal with this. Both of them get the same result. So let's look at one, um, one method we could use. I've got my five apples here, one apple, two apples, three apples, four apples, five apples. I'm sharing them between three people. So I've cut each of those apples into three parts. One of my three people is all going to get each of these red thirds. They're gonna get five times one third, one third, one third, one third, one third. Someone else is gonna get five of the other one thirds, one third, one third, one third, one third, one third. So what we start to see is that each friend is going to get one, two, three, four, five thirds. They're going to get five parts of an apple cut into three parts. Sounds a bit confusing there because we can't be using that word parts in different ways. This piece here is one third of an apple. Now I might be able to eat one one third of an apple. I might be able to have two one thirds of an apple. I might be able to have three one thirds of an apple, which would be a whole apple. But I could have four one thirds of an apple, five one thirds of an apple, six one thirds. I could have a hundred one thirds of an apple. The one third just tells me that that is the size. It's an apple cut into three equal parts. The number of them I have can be anything. So in this case, I've got five one-thirds. Now, you might remember from last year that one-third, uh, not one-third, one-third is a unit fraction, five-thirds is an improper fraction. It's improper because the numerator, the number at the top, in this case five, is greater, it's larger than the denominator, three. When that happens, when the top number, the numerator, is bigger than the bottom number, the denominator, we call it improper. When that doesn't happen and the bottom number, the denominator, is larger than the top number, we call that a proper fraction. So five thirds is an improper fraction. So we might change the way we write it. We might change it to what we call a mixed fraction fraction. It's a mixed fraction because it's got a whole number and it's got a fraction. We're mixing whole ordinal numbers and we're mixing fractions together. So we would change five thirds. In fact, let's get our five thirds over here. I know they're different colors, but here's one third, here's two thirds, here's three thirds, here's four thirds, and here's five thirds. Let's get rid of that third over there. Well, these five thirds Actually, when I piece them together, I can see that I've got one whole, and then I've got two thirds. So five thirds is the same as three thirds, a whole, and two thirds. And we can see that written here. Five thirds, five over three, is the same as one and two thirds. And we know that one and two thirds is a mixed number. So if we were sharing five apples between three friends, everyone would get one apple and two thirds. We could have solved this a different way. We could have split our five apples, one apple, two apple, three apple, four apple, five apple. 
we could have split them into three and two. And we could have seen that everyone here is going to get one apple each. And each of our three friends will get one apple. And I'm left with two. And I want to split that two, that remainder would be what we call it in division, into three parts. So again, I've done exactly what I did before. There's my one hole, there's my two hole, my two remainders, and I cut them into three equal parts. And each of these people will get one whole apple and they'll get two thirds. Exactly the same answer, a different way of doing it. Um, both ways are right, both ways work. It's just whichever one seems more comfortable and logical for you. Right. Just to recap, because we had some extra word language in there. Improper fractions are when the numerator is greater than the denominator. We can also represent that as a mixed fraction by taking away the whole. Three thirds was my whole. I've removed that from my four thirds and made it one whole and one third. And that would then become a mixed fraction because I have a whole number and I have a fraction. Right. So let's have a look at this. Seven pancakes are shared equally among five people. What fraction of a pancake does each person get? So seven pancakes split between five people. Pause the video for a moment and have a go. Brilliant. You might have written seven fifths, or you might have turned that into an improper, a mixed fraction and made it one and two fifths. So the same way, um, in the same way we just did the last part, you might have split each of these into fifths, each pancake into five equal pieces and counted them up. Or you might have said, here are five holes, that's the one, I've got my remainder of two, which I'm going to split into fifths, and everyone's going to get two of those fifths. Either way would be correct. What about this question? Eight divided by four equals something over four. I've put the answer as two. Am I right? Right, hopefully lots of you realised that I wouldn't be right if I was trying to answer this question. Eight divided by four would be eight over four. But eight over four, if I wanted to make a mixed fraction, would be the same as two and zero fourths. So if we were being pedantic, we could say the answer is two. But for this question where they've clearly put the denominator of four, the answer would be eight over four. And then lastly, let's just have a look at these two. Nine divided by four. How would we write that? Brilliant. Lots of you seeing that we'd write it as nine. Ooh, let's move that away. Nine over four. Again, we might want to try and... Um, we might want to try and make this into a mixed fraction, and we would look at 9. How can I make that into a mixed fraction? Well, if I've got 9 parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's a whole. So I'm going to take away 4 from 9, and that leaves me with 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, it's another whole. So now I've made 2, can I write? Yep, 2. And I've still got one fourth left. One fourth left. So if I wanted to make nine fourths into a mix, and it hasn't asked you to do that, but if I wanted to, it would be two and one fourth, because I know that two times four is eight plus one is nine. And um, just pause the video and just look at um, that again. Two times four is eight plus one makes nine. What have I just 
done there. Well, I've remembered that each of my holes, and remember this represents two holes, each of my holes represents four fourths. So I had four fourths plus I had four fourths, my two, plus I had one. Four plus four plus one is nine fourths. It's not magic fractions. It's not abracadabra and everything vanishes. We're just looking at holes and parts. And sometimes we can combine those parts to make a whole. And it makes it easier to talk about. Telling you you're allowed to eat two and a quarter slices of cake is probably a lot simpler than saying you're allowed to eat nine fourths of a cake. You're not allowed to eat any cake, just in case you're wondering. Right. Now, before you start this exercise, um, in the work on the worksheet, it does use the term simplest form. You probably remember it from last year, but just in case, simplest form. I was about to say is simply simplest form is just the smallest way you can represent a fraction. So you've done this when we've done equivalent fractions in year four and I think in year three. So if I have the fraction eight sixths, eight sixths, which I know is an improper fraction, then I can make this fraction smaller by using an equivalent, which means the fraction's the same. If I divide the eight by two, I go to four. If I divide the six by the same number, so two, I get three. So I know that eight six is exactly the same as four thirds. That means eight six of a chocolate bar is exactly the same amount of chocolate as four thirds of that chocolate bar. So the simplest form of this is four thirds. Some of you might be asking why I can't just halve it again, because I know that four halved is two and three halved is one and a half. But fractions can only have whole numbers in them. They cannot have decimals. So the simplest way to express eight sixths would be four thirds. Don't worry if when you get to this worksheet, you don't quite master simpling yet presenting something in its simplest form, because we are going to look at that later. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video or stop the video, complete worksheet one, and then come back to this video once you've finished to check your answers. It's really important this week, well, in fact, while we're learning fractions, that you are checking your answers. So I want you to make sure you're looking to see if something isn't making sense. Be honest. If it doesn't make sense, First, see if you can work it out. If you can't work it out yourself, then you can ask your parents to just send me a message so that I'm aware. On Wednesday, because Friday's a bank holiday, I'm going to get you to a quiz so I can see what parts we're not understanding. But it's really, really important that you do check your answers and that you are honest. So pause the video now and go and complete worksheet one, which is page 125 and 126. If you haven't got your workbooks, you can download it from the PDF on the class story. Brilliant. So hopefully you've completed worksheet one. If you haven't completed it, stop this video, don't cheat. If you have completed it, then here are the answers to the first part of the worksheet. Lulu bought pizza to share equally with Amira and Elliot. What fraction of the pizza, pizza did each of them get? Well, there was one pizza and three people. So everybody got one third of a pizza. Number two, four boys shared six bars of chocolate equally. What fraction of the bars did each boy get? Use different colors to shade the bars to show the division. Now, don't worry too much if you got yourself in a pickle with the bars. That's not so much the problem. What we've got to remember is that we've got six bars of chocolate split between four boys. 
that means everyone's getting six fourths. We simplified that down to three halves. That's an improper fraction. So I knew that I could make it mixed by saying they get one and a half. There's one boy's one and a half. There's another boy's one and a half. There's the third boy's one and a half. And there's the fourth boy's one and a half. Don't worry if you didn't um, get the bar parts of this right. Or if that confused you, it's a little bit tricky. Hopefully you've got most of this right. Again, it doesn't matter if you didn't simplify it down or if you didn't convert it into a mixed fraction. Right, this was the tr slightly trickier part. And I'm just gonna remind you again here that the purpose of this lesson isn't to be able to simplify or to convert between mixed and improper. So if that's where you went wrong, don't worry. 10 divided by five is 10 fifths. That means everyone would get two. 12 divided by three is 12 thirds means everyone would get four. 15 divided by three is 15 thirds. That means everyone would get five. And nine divided by three is nine thirds. Everyone would get three. And this is where it's asked you to put it in its simplest form. Three over seven, we can't simplify. Eight, oh no, sorry, seven over six, we can't simplify. Eight over three, we can't simplify. Nine over six, we can simplify that. Both of those numbers are in the three times table. So we can simplify it down by dividing nine by three and dividing six by three, which gives us three halves. 15 divided by six, we can simplify that. Again, both of these numbers are in the three times table. 15 divided by three is five, six divided by three is two. And lastly, 52 divided by eight, 52 eighths, and we can simplify that down by dividing by four. Okay, if you got stuck with any of those, do go back, have a look, see if you can figure out where you went wrong. Well done today, guys. I know it was a longer lesson and a tricky lesson. So a big well done.